okay, to start out with, I think a lot of times, like, right, you hear that there might be a linear path. Maybe you want to work at a tech company, want to do AI research, things like that. And so this is you and you have some goal, but I think oftentimes um, not every path is linear. And for me, it was kind of just what got me to my goal or where I'm now, I think is just following what I enjoy. And so I'll kind of take you through, I guess I split up my life in this way um, into different portions um, in terms of growing up, then applying to college, college, and then post-grad. And so those are um, how I see different sections of my life. I grew up in Boulder, Colorado. And so I think as a kid with a lot of you guys, right, you're just interested in like, I was really loved mountains and sports and just being outside. But I think a big portion of my life early on uh, was actually physics. And so I was not really interested in coding. And so in high school, I just worked in a lab um, at the University of Colorado Boulder. Um, and so I think this is kind of where if you're applying to schools now and uh, earlier in high school, I think just doing what you love to do, whether it's video games or if you love doing AI or maybe trying to build an app or something like that, I think really following what you love to do. So um, like at this point in my life, I didn't really think too much about my career or like what I want to do um, after school or what school I even wanted to go to and just kind of followed what I love to do. Applying to colleges, which many of you guys are applying now, I think this is where you kind of have to choose a bucket. And so like whether choosing your school, the department, the major, um, I think that it can be overwhelming at times. Um, but I think uh, first that whatever you choose or whatever school you end up going to, or even if you don't go to school or whatever major you decide doing, I think that something that I've taken away from it is that goals morph and interests change. And so going to college, I was really interested in physics. So I thought that I would do physics research, go to a physics PhD um, and be on more of the actual experimental physics side. So I worked on uh, molecular spectroscopy, which is basically a lot with lasers and shining lights and was pretty far from doing any sort of coding. Um, and so I think this is just a point in my life or in your guys' life too, where you have to be choosing a bucket and choosing a school, but you can kind of do whatever you like to do after and your things can change. Like, let's say you go and choose to be a physics major, or a medical, uh, some sort of biology major at school. You can still do, I feel like you can change at any point in your, in your life. College is a really uh, interesting uh, time where it's kind of, I guess we don't cover reinforcement learning here, but you're kind of do your exploration and your focus, you're balancing these two things. Um, and so you want to dive deep in certain subjects, but then also explore and uh, meet new people, do different student activities. And so this is where kind of I got into quantum computing. Um, and that was a bit through exploration, right? I started going to more, taking more computer science classes, um, going to different group meetings with different physics professors. And you start to learn more things and just follow kind of different paths that you're interested in. When, interested in. And so I think this kind of led me to this intersection between physics and computer science. But I think at this point in my life, like with college, um, my take was kind of just first exploring and following different interests. And so that led me to quantum computing and kind of within CS um, and learning more about AI and uh, machine learning. And then also something else that I would advise that was really beneficial to me was talking with people that you look up to. So whether it's a professor or someone in industry that you think that they do really cool work um, at a company, I think it never hurts to reach out. You'll be surprised if you reach out to someone you think is very high up, just to have a chat with them if you're actually interested in it and maybe do some background reading and things like that. I think talking with people that you look up to really can help you on your, your way to um, whatever your goals are. And obviously your goals are always changing, but I think that was something that I uh, found very useful. And then I think the last thing post-grad is where I am now. Uh, somewhat post-grad. So um, I think the balancing act that I uh, see here, uh, I want to balance like the people I'm around. I really uh, want to be with people that make me happy, that similar interest or people that I can learn from. The project that I'm working on, I think that I always want to work on something I'm passionate about and something that I think is impactful. And then I think with work, um, so uh, this is my first job after college, um, or not this, but now having my first job after college, um, having good work-life balance where I can still work on things outside of, uh, outside of work, like my personal projects, things like that, but then also um, being able to ski on weekends, hike, and things like that. 
And so I, I have, I guess, a question mark because it's kind of a mystery what is after postgrad. I feel like you're kind of on a set path in a sense where you're supposed to go to college, um, major in something, and then go on and get a job. But I think now you can kind of choose your own path after college. And um, if there's something you're interested in, I think that you can make a career at it no matter what. Um, and then these two images here are uh, part of the quantum computing research that I'm doing now uh, at MIT. Um, and so this is a quantum circuit and this is showing braiding of topological quantum bits. Um, but so uh, these are the three aspects of my life that I think are important to balance in postgrad. 